Hello my friends and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the new features and fixes that went into version 0.1.23 of Como Rebi, the tiling window manager for Windows, which is written in the Rust programming language. If we come on over here to the release with the changelog, you can see we have the fixes, the refactors, the features. Um, if ever you are interested in, in digging down specifically into older releases, you can also click here on the uh, releases tab and then you get the same info for all of the releases going pretty, pretty far back. Uh, today we're looking at this one. So why don't we start with the features? So the one that I am most excited about is the stack bar feature. It's still, I think, experimental, but it's pretty cool. So I just activated it there by calling the stack left command, I think in the uh, in the example whkd config that is alt and left, right, up, down. Uh, and you can see here we have this new thing at the top. So if I click here, it's going to switch me to Firefox. If I go here, it's going to switch me back. And you can also use the cycle shortcuts to cycle through. And yeah, that's that's it. So before, the only way to tell that you're in a stack was to set a custom stack color. So here, that is this green color. And then the the blue tells you that you're not in a multi-container stack. Uh, but now you also have this. And I think it's it's pretty cool. It's very nice. So do play around with that. Uh, there is a, a section on the docs page. So you can go to common workflows. And there is a section on configuring the stack bar. I believe this is taken from my configuration file. So if you want it to look like how it looks in this video, you can pretty much copy paste this stack bar block into your komorebi.json configuration file. So that is very cool. I hope I hope you all like that. Um, it is not considered stable. So you may encounter visual artifacts from time to time. Uh, do report those. Uh, if they really bug you, please also try and fix those because I feel like we often do our best work when something bugs and annoys us just enough, just enough to uh, to trigger moments of greatness. That's actually how this whole tiling window manager came about. I was so frustrated using Windows uh, when I first built this computer. I just, it was so difficult for me coming from using a tiling window manager to not having one at all. And I was so frustrated. I was so frustrated. And this is the result of that frustration. And I'm very happy that I get to share this with all the fellow tiling window manager aficionados across the world. So that is the stack bar. Um, we also have the active window border style option. So you may have noticed, right? I have square borders here. This is still Windows 11. This is not Windows 10. I have square borders. If you go back and watch the last video, um, there was this win 11 toggle rounded corners tool that I mentioned that I started using. And that's all well and good, but it was kind of weird because actually, let me see if I can just do this on the fly now. It was kind of weird because we still had the Komorebi border um, looking rounded. So there is this new active window border style configuration option. Uh, you can set this to rounded. You can set this to system to just follow the system, or you can set it to square. So if I update this to rounded, uh, here you go, it's updated. It, I mean, it still identifies what the focused window is, but it doesn't really look aesthetic 
you know? Uh, and imagine that in the vaporwave font aesthetic. Um, but if you switch this to square, uh, it takes a moment to update, and then you have the nice aesthetic square borders. Uh, really cool, I, I really like this. Um, obviously because I am using it now in all of my videos and in my day-to-day my -day interactions with the computer. So that is super cool feature number two. These are the two visual features. Um, and I think it's a good thing we opened up the, uh, the configuration file here because the other two new features are configuration features. So, uh, the f well, these both have dedicated videos, which I, I highly recommend you go and watch if you want to really understand how this works. But in a nutshell, there were some situations with some applications where having these kinds of global float rules uh, was not granular enough. So what you can do now is, in addition to just passing an object, you can pass an array of objects. Uh, like this. And... Let me just try and construct this real quick. And what happens when you pass an array is we're saying that if we want this rule to match, it can be a float rule, it can be a manage rule, it can be a, uh, a workspace rule, an initial workspace rule. This goes for any rules. And we're saying if we want the rule to match, both of the, um, how should we call these? Both of the matches here, they need to evaluate to true. So let's say, oh, this isn't a great idea. Let's say we have edge, right? And so we can say, I want to float the window uh, whose executable is edge.exe when the title uh, starts with Slack. So every edge Slack window will be floated, but other edge windows won't. And so I hope you can start to see how you can start to put uh, different little rules together to handle really complex uh, scenarios and situations. And I would really love to hear um, from whoever starts using this um, if there is a particularly tricky app that you weren't able to get working exactly how you wanted before. Uh, I hope this is going to get get you closer. Um, besides that, we have also added negative matching strategies. So before you had uh, equals, starts with, contains. Now we have does not equal, does not end with, does not contain, and does not start with. Uh, it's a little thing that I, I hope will make uh, a big difference for people who are struggling with tricky applications. So those are the other two uh, big features that went into this release. And there are a bunch of fixes. Most of the fixes here relate to focus follows mouse handling. Uh, a bunch of stuff had gotten broken. I don't personally use focus follows mouse, uh, but we have two videos, uh, two devlogs of how these were fixed. Uh, again, highly recommend going and, and looking at them. At least, you know, the beginnings of those videos where I demonstrate what the bug is, how it manifests, and then maybe skipping towards the end to see the the finished uh, behavior once once they have been fixed. So in general, let's say that focus follows mouse, the Komorebi implementation is working much, much better than it was in version 0.1.22. The other thing that I personally am super happy about is that new windows from Firefox get managed correctly. You can see I'm opening and closing 
Firefox Windows and like they just work now. That was driving me crazy before. If it was also driving you crazy, you can rejoice. Upgrade to version 0.1.23 and you you won't have that issue anymore. Um, what else? I think that is... Oh, so there was one more. There was one more. I don't think I recorded a video for this, uh, but it was it was super frustrating. So, when you had when you had a um, when you had a window like this that was not managed and you try to drag it around like I'm doing now, it would actually trigger resizes and moves of the managed windows underneath. That was not cool. That was not cool at all. And it bugged me for a really long time. Somebody reported it. Uh, JP Miller reported it. And I was like, you know what? It is time. It is time for us to fix this. And now it is fixed. So if that was bugging you before, it shall not bug you again, hopefully, unless there is a regression, which there will not be, because I am a very smart and competent developer. Oh well, I try to be, I try to be. But there are enough eyes watching me in the devlogs, and uh, enough testers in the Discord to thankfully catch any regressions that I do introduce. And yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. So I I think this is an interesting release. Um, it's got some some visual stuff. It's got some config stuff. It's got some iterative fixing stuff. It's it's a nice mix of everything. And I don't think it has been too long between the two releases. So that was two hours ago, and that was March the 3rd. Today is April the 7th, so it's about a month between releases. So I think we're doing we're doing better at my previously stated goal of having more frequent releases uh, with less scope for big breakages between them. Uh, what do we have coming up? Let's have a look in the pull requests. Um, this user legit camper is putting together a PR for taskbar visibility controls. Uh, that's looking pretty interesting. Uh, I did say that I would like to get this into version 0.1.24. Uh, so yeah, maybe even by the time that this goes live, uh, this this PR may be merged in, so you can toggle your taskbar at the bottom through Como Rebi instead of. Uh, yet another third-party application that you need to keep running. There was something I saw on the issues as well. Um, so Sludging mentioned that it would be nice to be able to pass an array of multiple files in app-specific configuration path. I think that's quite a nice low-hanging fruit, so we're going to do that as well for version 0.1.24. And who knows what else? I would like to look at the borders. Again, the borders are still a bit janky. And you know, I think we're at a place where we're, we have everything in place to be able to have active and inactive window borders so that um, so that things look a little bit more aesthetic, you know? Aesthetic is the word of the video. That should be the name of the, the release, Aesthetic, in the Vaporwave font. Uh, yeah. What time are we on? Oh my god, I've been rambling for 14 minutes. Alright, let's wrap this on up. And as we do, as we do, uh, we are gonna wrap this up by saying, if I can find it, by saying thank you to the sponsors uh, who have been supporting me for a very long time, and who's, um, I don't want to say the word sponsor twice, but whose sponsorship uh, I deeply, deeply appreciate, whose support, let's say, whose support I deeply, deeply appreciate. So, 
let's start today with David, who I believe is a new sponsor. David, thank you for your sponsorship. Thank you also to Azine, James, Pavel, EFL1P, private sponsor number one, uh, Nia, Maxwell, PJHFGGIJ, Hiro, DM1681, Darian, Kwong, Shorefire, Solomon, private sponsor number two, Evan, Evan sucks, oh, Evan has a new, um, what is this called, new display picture, thank you for your support Evan, you do not sucks, you rocks, uh, Alex, Julian, and Hisayuki, thank you all so, so very much for your support, if you too would like to become a sponsor head on over to this sponsor page where you can become either a one-time sponsor or a monthly sponsor and honestly even if it's just a dollar a month it makes such a huge difference believe me it really really does if however if however you are not in a position to become a sponsor the very very next best thing that you can do is make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel, which is where I assume you're watching this video right now. Um, as of the start of this year, the channel uh, reached full monetization status, which means that you can leave tips on the videos and you can also... Um, actually, you don't have to do anything. You just watch the videos and you like them and you watch and skip the ads and... Uh, the channel gets a cut of the ad revenue. Uh, we don't have like millions and millions of viewers and subscribers, so it's not big bucks or anything. It's still in the order of cents per video, uh, but it is a really, really great, easy, passive way for you to support the future of this project. And with that, my friends, I think, I think it is time for us to say goodbye for this time just for this time so my friends i hope that whatever you will do today you have a great great day free palestine and i'll see you all back here next time